What's going on, Hood Nation? Nitch here, DFS. We're checking out Sephiroth materializes in the death battle. Now, I did make a prediction. I was, I came off salty to a lot of people, and I, it is what it is. I hope that Screw Attack does really good research on this, but I think our opinions are going to defer on how we do like our research, and that's okay. I'm here for the entertainment. No matter what, I'm rooting for my boy Sephiroth, but I don't know, man. Anyways, y'all, go watch the original for watching it with me. I don't shut up. And check out my gaming channel, Mega Ninja. Boy. Through the millennia, legends were passed down of a place with a source of unlimited energy, the Promised Land. Yeah. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost, until the Shinra Electric Power Company excavated the remains of a being believed to hail from the very land they Genova. sought. They called this weird, naked, purple lady Genova, and thought that if they could bring her back to life, she could help them find the Promised Land. But sure. apparently, they didn't have any phoenix downs. If they couldn't resurrect a being who could lead them to the Promised Land, Shinra would simply create their own. After many experiments in fusing Genova's cells with those of a humans, Shinra finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. With hair like that, it's no wonder he was created in a lab. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to real Final it's Fantasy silky. lore, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of shampoo and conditioner every single time he bathes. And he can <laughs> change the scent of an entire room with just a toss of his hair. Why do you know that? Did you join his fan club or something? What? As a matter of fact, I did. For research. But Shinra wasn't interested in <laughs> Sephiroth for his hair. And while they waited for his possible memories of the so-called Promised Land to kick in, they found out he was exceptionally useful as part of their soldier program. Wait, wait, go, this man. electric company has their own private military? I'd hate to miss a payment with those guys, especially <laughs> if they sent Seph after me. I mean, look at the ridiculously huge sword he keeps with him. That's right. his Masamune. This Masamune. seven foot two behemoth of a blade is a lot like the Nodachi swords they used back in feudal Japan. But instead of swinging this monster with two hands like a wuss, Sephiroth only needs one. As confidently as Sephiroth wields Masamune, even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a mercenary. He Ooh. was instrumental in ensuring Shinra's victory in the Wutai War, after which he returned home a legend. But those warm, fuzzy feelings of victory didn't last long. While on another mission to the town of Nibelheim, Sephiroth just so happened to find a library with a whole bunch of books about the Genova Project. That's when he discovered nice that, that he was a secret a clone super soldier the whole time. The truth crushed Sephiroth and turned him mad. In his rage, he destroyed Nibelheim and its residents, and was stopped by a mercenary you may know as Cloud Strife. And in their battle, Sephiroth was impaled by this ridiculously huge sword and fell to his death. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't been dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant window screensaver called the Livestream. It also kind of looks <laughs> like nice. an alternate dimension where the entire place is a rave. Speaking of which, Wiz, did you see the new screensaver I put on your computer? What? Oh. You're not supposed to touch my computer. I, I was running calculations. Oh my god. Oh, maybe I can still save it. Ah, <laughs> he's not going to make it in time. Well, come back next week as we take a look at Severoth's opponent, Virgil. Spoilers, the screensaver was a big old dick. <laughs> I knew it. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> he's going to make some nasty ass freaking screensaver. <laughs> Oh, man. Most people spend. That's great. <laughs> oh, I had a feeling it was going to be a big black. <laughs> so, anyways, I definitely enjoyed this one. Uh, definitely going to check out the next week's one as well. No matter what, I'm rooting for my boy Seth Roth, though. Uh, I just. Just got to have fun with it, you know? It's just the best you can do. And uh, I, I hope uh, a lot of stuff comes to life of all the things and feats he can do. But. I mean, just the way that the characters are, are scaled to it. Ah, my boy's in trouble. And I guess my ultimate question is, is why are these two fighting each other? And I just want to know, like, what is the, um, there is no comparison. Like, to me, like, 
anything close like the ultimate life for you know like that the soldier he's a, he's a made prey you know like and for, you know like virgil's not they're just swordsmen you know like I, I don't understand the the similarities you know like laura croft fought uh what's his name you know the, the the explorer like i could see the similarities like voltron and power rangers i know it was a squirrel match but i could see the similarities like i'm just kind of why don't you guys let me know maybe why i guess because they both have long swords if that's the case, I mean, then you don't really want to squirrel the match. You want to put them kind of more even, you know. But anyways, y'all, if you guys want to join Hood Nation, your chance to do so is going to be right here. And also, like always, the playlist, like that to get your feet wet. If I ain't a cup of tea, y'all go find it. It's out there. Believe it. This is Niche from DFX, and I'm out.